So it was a challenging period. Are we starting to see the upside and coming out of that or are there further hurdles ahead? Uh, for the energy sector, it has been a particularly challenging time. Uh, energy use has been relatively stable during COVID pandemic, but the challenge for us has been just keeping our operations secure and also keeping our decarbonisation projects on track. We're, we're going through a massive energy transition and keeping those projects on track has been vitally important to us. So what is the plan in the short to, to medium term when it comes to decarbonisation? Uh, we have plans in, in every uh, area of our business. In, in Hong Kong, which is our core business, uh, we're working with the Hong Kong government to uh, work on a carbon reduction target that will see Hong Kong being carbon neutral by 2050. Uh, so there'll be uh, a 30-year investment uh, horizon for us to, to help decarbonize the electricity sector. Electricity contributes around 65% of Hong Kong's carbon emissions. So if that can be decarbonized and then carbon-free electricity can be used in the transport sector, that will essentially see most of uh, Hong Kong's economy being decarbonized. We're working in Australia uh, by uh, making more renewable energy available uh, to our customers. We're, we're providing the, uh, the, the toolkit that will see energy storage being used uh, with pump storage, with battery storage, and with fast response gas uh, capacity. That we'll see more renewables being uh, employed in the system. Uh, in China, our business is pretty much carbon-free now. Most of our earnings come from the nuclear sector and from uh, our portfolio of re renewable energy projects. And similarly, in India, we're working towards developing the renewable energy and the transmission capacity mm. that will help uh, see the, that uh, sector decarbonized. Will decarbonization lead to higher power bills? Uh, not as much as people think. Uh, this is investment which will be spread over a 30-year period. And remember, these are long-lived assets. So uh, the cost of those investments gets spread over a long time. And one of the big costs of energy or, or of electricity is the fuel that we purchase. So by moving away from fossil fuels, it actually removes that part of our cost. So uh, when you put it all together, it won't be as much as people might fear. Your profits were pressured both in Australia and China. What happened there and what's the outlook? Uh, we have a very diverse business. Uh, in, always in some part of our business there are challenges and uh, there are headwinds in others. Uh, very strong, solid performance in Hong Kong, but what we've seen is a, a steep rise in coal prices in China in recent months. Uh, fuel prices generally have been on the rise. I think that's part of a recovery from the COVID pandemic. Uh, so higher, higher coal prices has, has uh, put pressure on that part of our, uh, of our operation. It is a relatively small part of our portfolio in China. Um, Australia, we had some one-off expenses. Uh, we saw very heavy rainfall in the earlier part of the year, which affected one of our, uh, our plants at Yalorn in Victoria. Uh, and generally, wholesale prices ha have been falling in Australia over, over the first part of this year. So uh, overall, uh, when you strip all of the one-offs out, uh, our underlying business is in reasonably good shape and uh, is, is, is quite resilient. Has 2021 been a better year for meeting these renewable targets than the previous year was? Uh, I think we adapted quickly to the COVID pandemic. We had to do a lot of work last year just to keep projects uh, running. The supply chains were all impacted. Uh, it was hard to, to, to bring equipment in. Uh, even simple things required an order of magnitude more planning than we'd, we'd ever seen in the past. I think we've learned lessons from that, and so 2021 has been uh, a better year, and we've been able to, to, to play a little bit of catch-up this year. So tell us about the power plant plans for New South Wales and where we're at with that. Uh, well, we're seeing uh, an energy transition in Australia where more renewable energy is coming onto the system. Uh, now, uh, when you have more renewable energy, you still need to make the energy system work and there still needs to be the storage and uh, the ability to control supply and demand. So uh, a whole new set of tools are going to be needed. Uh, in New South Wales, we're developing a, a gas plant which will 
ultimately be able to use hydrogen. Uh, right, right from the start, it'll be able to use 5% hydrogen, and uh, this will be the first power plant, a gas power plant, that will be uh, net zero carbon from, from day one. Uh, so, so these are new technologies that we're, we're developing. Uh, all of this will be part of a new set of tools that we'll need in the energy sector to, to help with that transition to carbon-free electricity. What will the fuel mix then end up looking like for CLP when it comes to hydrogen, nuclear, and others? Uh, it will be a mix. And uh, in different parts of our operation, we will see different mixes. So uh, Hong Kong, for example, has uh, a challenge. There's not a lot of land here. So uh, we're looking at offshore wind. We're looking at more nuclear power and we're looking at the natural gas that we currently use transitioning towards hydrogen. So that will be a, a mix of hydrogen, nuclear, and offshore wind. In Australia, for example, you have a very different mix because there's a lot more potential for renewable energy. So we'll see a lot more renewable energy, but with batteries and pump storage systems that will enable that renewable energy, the variability in that renewable energy, to, to be stabilized.